Hi, my name is Roger and welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk about mid-side equalization. What it is, how to use it, where to use it and why you should use it. Mid-side, what is that? Well, it started as a recording technique developed by the British engineer Alan Bloomline as early as in the 1930s. It's a stereophonic recording technique, even though people listened to music in mono at that time because there were no stereophonic equipment to listen to music on. We have one microphone in cardioid pointing at the source. That's the mid of the mid-side spectrum. The sides were a figure of eight microphone at 90 degree angle from the first microphone, the membranes as close together as possible, so it's all phase coherent. And then we take the figure of eight microphone, split the signal into two and phase flip one of the signals and pan them left and right. Then we have one positive side and one negative side. And if we collapse it into mono, the figure of eight microphone will totally disappear. It will cancel itself out. Therefore, the MS recording technique is totally mono-compatible. Nowadays, we can process signals with mid-side techniques. It's not really the same as the recording technique, but close to it. We need a decoder for that, a decoder that detects what's in the stereo spectrum and can split it into mid and sides, where the mids are in both speakers, so to speak, what's both in left and right will go to the mid. What's only in left will go to the left and what's only in right will go to the right, hence the sides. I think most doors nowadays have a decoder for mid-side processing. If you don't have it, there are a couple of free plugins you can use. Voxengo have one, Blue Cat Audio have one, I will link them in the description. I will show you a little bit of how you can use a mid-side EQ and I will use Logic's own EQ for this so you can also see how you can use it in Logic. If I click the EQ on this track, I get a stereo EQ. I don't want that because that won't work. I have to go in my plugins folder, choose the channel EQ and go to dual mono. Then I can click this star sign and change it from stereo to mid-side. Now we have a mid-side EQ. So this only affects the mid and this only affects the sides. I have a track that sounds like this. Let's listen to only the mid and skip the sides for now. So I will lower the sides totally and go to the mid. So this is what the decoder detects is in the mid of the stereo spectrum. If we do the opposite and lower the mid and raise the sides again, it sounds like this. So, but let's focus on the mid first. That's where the beef is. Where, that's where most of the main instruments lives. Vocal, snare drum, bass drum, bass, so on. So let's do some EQ adjustments to see if we can make this pop a little bit more. So I bumped up the bass a little bit, high passed it, took away a little bit of the low mids and raised a little bit of the shine where the vocal and the snare drum lives. Let's go to the sides. I will lower the mids now and go to the side and see how they sound. I'm 
I'm only doing quick adjustments here, so maybe you can understand how you can use a mid side EQ. Let's raise the mid again and put them together. So we started here. And now we're here. That's much better in my opinion, but I believe I can raise the sides a bit to get a wider stereo image. So I will raise the sides, press the sides and raise it a little bit. Something like that maybe. So you can also play with the stereo image if you want it narrower or wider with an MSEQ. We started here. And now we're here. And because I high pass the sides at 130 hertz, the bass is still in mono, which is really important, especially if you want to play it loud on a big on some big speakers. So where should you use a mid-side EQ? Well, I use it mostly to carve out frequencies to get room for other instruments or to manipulate the stereo image of a track. So here I have another track, piano and vocal track, that sounds like this. Did it again and again. I like the piano and the vocal to have nearly equal volume, but if I do that, they will compete with each other, especially in the mid-range. So I will choose a mid-side EQ on the piano, and for this I will go to the BX Digital version 3. This is the EQ I use the most when I'm doing mid-side processing. Let's listen to the piano. We know that the vocal is in the middle, so let's listen to the middle of the piano also. I hear that it's a little bit muddy in the low mid, and also that the mid range around 1k-ish will compete with the vocal. So let's get rid of that a little bit in the mid of the piano, not in the sides. Now the piano starts to sound a little bit hollow, but bear with me. Let's listen to the side of the piano. I think I can raise the low mids a little bit on the sides and also get rid of some nasal frequencies. That frequency, not beautiful. And together, both mid and side. A little bit more shine on top, maybe on the side channel. And let's widen the stereo image a little bit on the piano to let the vocal through.
So we started here. And now we're here. Not a huge difference, but I think the difference is enough to let the vocal through. Let's listen to it. Did it again and again And the song that he sings No empty spaces Just beautiful phrases Something like that. Another trick I can show you is that I have two reverbs on this track. I have a short from Valhalla Vintage Verb with a mid-side EQ after it, narrowing the stereo image a little bit. I also took away a little bit of the low mids in the mid of the EQ. I have a long reverb, which is the UAD EMT 250 with a mid-side EQ after it, widening the stereo image a bit. So you can use it also for stereo image placement on effects like reverb or delays or something like that. Why should you use a mid-side EQ? Well, for me, it's a problem solver. It's like a multiband compressor. I go for a multiband compressor when I want to solve a certain problem. It's the same thing with the mid-side EQ. I don't use it on every track. I don't use it on every stereo track. I normally have it on my master bus. And also, if I want to carve out frequencies to let other instruments through, like this piano and vocal thing. That's where I use a mid-side EQ. Where do you use it? And do you use it all the time? Please tell me in the comments. I hope you found this video interesting and if you did, please give it a like and also subscribe if you haven't. Alan Bloomline, you should really read about him. He was a really clever guy who patented a lot of things that we still use for recording audio. Unfortunately, he died only 38 years old in a plane crash during World War II. He was an engineer. Engineer in Swedish is ingenjör. Ingenjör. Until next time, Roger that. In the song.